Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Um, I hope you're all having a great day today. Today I'm going to be working some more on my altered book and I have been working on it a little bit. Let's see, I just added this, this is something I made and I actually will link above um, a link to this video because I show you how to make this envelope. At a, it's made out of a paper doily and it's just lined with paper. So I'll, sh I'll show you how to make that. So I just stuck that in that pocket there. No, no big deal. <laughs> I um, made this little journaling card. I put in this pocket. Uh, let's see. And then I think the only other thing I did was do this page here. And all I'm going to say is I watch a lot of other people's videos. You know, like Gail and... Um, Shabby Dabby Doo da, Tina there, and um, Rachel at Roxy Creations, and some of the others. I just, I watch a lot of them, and of course, I've tried to kind of um, emulate their style. Oh, and Tracy Fox, um, but you know, I'm starting to really get into this more where I'm like doing my thing, making it look the way I like, and it may not be what people think of when they think of junk journals, uh, per se, but um, I'm doing what I want, and you're going to see this more and more as I work through um, my book. Like I said, it's the theme is butterflies. I'm not looking for a matchy-matchy throughout the book, but I'm just going to have fun with it, which is what you should do anyway when you craft, but sometimes I put myself under too much pressure and try to make it look like a certain style and it may not even be my own style it's just what I see out there so I want it to look like that but I'm gonna go hard with trying to make it me so I hope y'all enjoy that and um, I had this was a from this uh, paper a piece of it so I kind of want to use it um, I don't know if I'm gonna use it on this page right across from it but I've, I've saved it to use um, which, I mean, I could cut out that butterfly and just put it right there. That would look cool. I might do that. I don't know. We'll see. We'll think about it. So, I know I already said I hope everybody's having a great day, and I really hope you are. Today, I am off work. So, I'm going to jump in and just do some crafting. Now, I found this paper pack. I actually reorganized the other day when I was crafting this page here. I just, I couldn't find anything. So, I organized my mess even more. And I found this paper pack that I had bought a while back. And so, it does have butterflies in it. So, I will be using it. Um, it's beautiful. It's by Kaiser Craft. So I'm going to use it, not necessarily on this page across from it, but I wanted to show it to y'all. So let's see. I love doing the decoupage with the napkins. I love the way that looks. Um, I have to remember where I put my paper, so that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> that's the bad part about when you organize stuff. It's like, where did I put this now? Okay, I have this. Y'all, if you have ever been a scrapbooker back in the day, you have the crop and style stuff. And I kept all my stuff, y'all. I have bags. I have, like, the wheelie bags. I have the wheels on them. I have my paper taker. I have my paper sticker binder. And I still use all of it. So, yeah, don't get rid of all that old stuff. You, I mean, sometimes it sits in my closet with nothing in it. But then I figure out there's something I can use it for. So I went ahead and put my paper in here because I had it sitting on a table this, or a little like stool beside my desk, but my cat kept knocking it off. So let's see what I want to use. I want to use this, but I'm not sure how. I used a piece of it here, but I really like that. And I might use that in that page across. I'm sorry, I know this is boring. I'm just trying to figure out what paper I wanna use. I should have done this before I started. That one seems challenging, so I'm gonna go with it. I like doing something that's a little bit of a challenge, figure out how to use. So I'll give you a little update on my little chihuahua. 
she uh, had to go back to the vet last week. Um, of course, I think I told y'all I took her to the emergency vet, and they scared me because they are like, she may have this. It's like a really debilitating, um, something that attacks the, you know, their nervous system, and I was really kind of freaked out about that. I spent a day crying, just worried that that's what it was, and so we went back to my normal vet last week. And my vet was like, let's just continue um, on all her medication. And which, that's one thing the emergency vet had done was put her back on all the medication she was on before. So she is actually back on the steroid that she was on before and doing well. But we've started to taper her off the steroid. And I've noticed again that she's having trouble. Um, she doesn't have very good reaction time with her front legs. So when she walks, she stumbles a good bit. So it's very sad, but she's, you know, still happy and it doesn't seem to aggravate her as much as it bothers me. Um, so, you know, we're just gonna keep up the treatment and see what happens. But I just kind of wanted to give y'all an update. She's lying here on the floor beside me, uh, taking her little nap. And uh, I'm trying very hard. My Her dog bed is right beside this little stool I have paper on, so I have to be really careful not to, for anything to fall off. All right, I think I'm trimming the right side. I didn't like how far in it went. That's one thing I'm trying to figure out with doing the altered books. And I know I zoomed the camera in some. If y'all do not like it this zoomed in, please let me know. But uh, I thought, that was something that might work out a little better. We'll, we'll find out. But anyway, what I was saying was what I don't really know when you're doing altered books is how far into um, this spine area you really want to go. Because I, with this paper, especially this heavier weight paper, no matter how much glue you put on it, it tends to want to curl up there. And of course, if that starts curling up, then when you close the book, it's going to bend the paper. So I've kind of been fighting with how much, how far to go in right there. So I th actually think I'm gonna cut this a little bit more because this paper is a really heavyweight paper. And I will say when I first ordered this paper, I hated the texture of it. It almost feels like poster board. Um, it's that kind of texture, and then it has kind of that sheen to it. Really wasn't that crazy about it, but I paid for it, and I'm going to use it. Um, I could come back with just some matte medium over it and kind of uh, tone down the glossiness. See, some papers are more glossy than others, but see that shine from the light on there? I don't like that. But uh, what I may do is come back with some matte medium and paint over it. And then again, by the time I'm done with this, I might be like, nope, looks great. Staying just the way it is. <laughs> so I'm going to use the liquid glue on this because it is the thicker paper. So I'm curious to know if any of you are doing any of the challenges that are out there. I see there's a good many, um, like Roxy Creation, there's a challenge. And then I saw some type of stitching challenge that somebody's doing that some of the people are making videos for. I've never done any challenges or videoed, you know, me doing challenges, but it's pretty interesting. I especially like the one with the stitching. I just don't know if it's too late to join in. You know, how do y'all feel about that with challenges? I mean, do you just join in if you you know, want to try it out, who cares if they're already on week seven, week eight, and just join in? Or do you feel like, mm, show started at the beginning? So, I'm kind of thinking, well, what make, what difference does it make? I can join in, and if I do it some weeks, I do it, and if I don't, I don't. But I need to, like, find the original where they did the, issued the challenge, because I, I don't really know a lot about it, except for seeing the videos. 
and I put this on completely crooked. That is one bad thing about this glue. If you, it catches pretty quickly. So if you've set it down and it's already got a hold, you're going to rip the paper under it to pick it up. And all that cutting I did of this, I kind of messed up by putting it in the wrong spot. But we'll just, I'll hold it down a few minutes. So doing an altered book, I have to think about how bulky some things are. Um, and then I started thinking the other day, like how do you do a closure? Like I've, I've bought some closures, but I don't know how you get, I think they're little like pegs, but how do you get them through the cover? I mean, I guess I could use my Dremel or my drill bit. I don't know. I guess I will have to look that up on YouTube because I have no idea. <laughs> That's good enough, and I kind of smeared glue, but thankfully this glue dries clear. I wish, see how much room I had to go over, and I should have gone over, but it, that doesn't look bad. And I do like, I really did, this was a big 12 by 12 piece of paper, and this butterfly was in the corner, really big, with his wings spread out. But I do like how it looks. So my idea is, is to put this part of the wing on that background piece. This needs to be glued. So let's see how we want to do that. So I'm just going to lay it here and I'll draw. My cat, if y'all hear him scratching, he's obsessed with trying, I have those little square cubby shelves beside my desk and he is obsessed with trying to get into the shelf. For whatever reason, he has decided that is the best thing ever, those little cubby holes, and he tries to get everything I have in that bottom cubby out so he can um, go lie down in there. So he's over here making noise because since I'm sitting at the desk, he especially wants to go climb inside that little cubby hole. So I'm, this is, I'm doing the really technical way of measuring this. I'm just drawing around the page and I'll just use scissors. Oops, dropping things. I'm still trying to figure out my lighting. I know I'm getting a lot of shadows. Um, of course, I craft in the middle of my, well, it's not the middle of my living room, but it is in a corner of my living room, so I don't want to get some gigantic lights because I already take up most of my living room with my craft desk. Well, this corner in the hallway is, um, yeah, I kind of taken over the house with my crafting. Thankfully, I have a sweet husband who doesn't care that I do that. Um, let's see. All right, so now we need to glue it in right here. Right. Now I'll put glue on the rest of it. So I'm sorry if there's a lot of shadows. Um, if anybody has any recommendations, uh, you know, ideas that aren't some giant light. I have three lights here right now. Um, and maybe they're all, maybe I just have things pointing the wrong direction. I don't know. I'm gonna to try to turn one off and see if that makes a big of a difference. All right, we're gonna turn that one off and we'll see what happens. All right, so let's see if this turned out like I wanted it to. Yep, that looks nice.
I guess because I was a scrapbooker and maybe this is something other, you know, people who journal do, is I want each page to tell a story. Even though I don't have photographs on here, each page is kind of like its own little storybook on page. So um, I try to think of that when I'm making my pages. Like, I, I, I don't know. I, I hope I'm explaining that well. And I don't even mean, like, literally it tells a story. It's just, like, it, it's, it sets its own mood, I guess I should say. Each page has, um, each layout has its own mood and its own, um, especially if you're using this to journal in, a way to draw out different feelings. So, um, I do hope the person I'm giving this to really likes it. She loves butterflies. I don't know her personally. She's the mom of one of my daughter's friends and she loves butterflies. So I really wanted to make a butterfly journal. And since, especially this is my first journal I have made in an altered book style, I was not gonna charge for it. So I'm just going to make it for her to have I really do like the way that turned out. I love it. Now I've got to decide what I want to do. Um, we could make a journaling card with this that has the butterfly kind of coming out. I think that's too wide. Let's cut part of that off. I was going to do journaling cards all last, but I've kind of started to incorporate some in the book because I had an idea the other day and I wanted to do it. I do like the way that looks when you pull it out and the butterfly emerges. I like that. I just don't know if I want all of this. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to loosely cut around this butterfly. That way he'll kind of be like a little surprise stuck down in there. Um, we're going to... I like that torn edge on the other side, so I'm gonna go ahead and tear this. Okay, I like the way that looks. So I'm thinking we'll use some book page to put that on. And I actually have some packaging that I want to use. So I don't throw it in the trash and that's a perfect size. So let's cover this packaging. I'm going to move the book out of the way. And we'll cover the packaging with some of this book page. So for that, I'm going to use a glue stick. And these glue sticks, y'all, are not expensive at all. These are from um, Amazon. I had bought these to use at Vacation Bible School, and it was like a whole pack. I don't know how many it was. Of course, they're not very large um, glue sticks. See, they're just like your normal size glue stick, but they stick well. You do have to, I mean, put the glue on. You can't just, you know, put a little thin line. You have to really glob it on there. But I'm happy with them. And then, of course, we didn't use them all during vacation Bible school. And it wasn't something I got the church to reimburse me for. So I kept them to use for my own crafting. But I love, I like the idea of reusing packaging and, um, such as that. Of course, that's, you know, truly what a junk journal is. You use junk to make it. Of course, 
my journals probably aren't truly junk journals because I'm using a bunch of scrapbook paper that is not junk. <laughs> so mine are just really journals with a little bit of junk thrown in here and there. So, but hey, everybody has their own interpretation. And so we're gonna put the book page on that side and then I'm gonna get some coffee dyed paper to put on this other side. And I really like this one I, I use. This one's actually avocado dyed and it has some texture that I really like on it. So we'll do that one. It's, it's crazy because when I'm filming, of course, I turn all the other, everything else off in the house. And um, it's very quiet. I'm not used to it being so quiet. I guess because even when I sit here crafting, I listen to music or I have the TV just playing in the background. I don't know why. I can't stand to have it really quiet. <laughs> okay. Now, if you, this paper here I used, um, it was like a, whoops, a net bag that my husband had gotten some firewood in. And I just, when I wet it with the avocado, I went ahead and um, laid the bags on top of it and let it dry that way. And that's how I got that texture. And I stacked them so the back side looks different from the front side. So... I really like how it turned out. Now, I have to appreciate the abilities of Tina at Shabby Dabby Doo Dah with her scissors. But as y'all can tell with this very crooked line I have going there, I do not possess those abilities of cutting a straight line with scissors. So I am going to use my paper trimmer and try to fix that horrible cut that I did. Oh, this blade is kinda not very sharp. So hopefully, that's okay. It just gave it a little bit of a torn edge. Still not very straight, but I think it's better than what it was. This cutter really does not like um, thin paper. I can replace the blade and within a day or two, it starts doing this all over again with thin paper. It just shreds it. It does not want to cut it. But that's okay. We have a little bit of torn here on the side. I'm just gonna kind of go with that. I have my distressor right here. We'll just go on the sides. And I left a little extra um, paper kind of hanging. This thing's very wet with glue right now. Because I put lots of glue on there. So this will be the side that can be journaled on. And I'm going to come over here with the butterfly. And let's see. Since I really want the butterfly to peek out, I want to see where on the card. So if we have the card in like this, we need, now I had a pencil. I don't know where it went, so we're gonna take this one. I want the butterfly to kind of stick out to here. So this is where I'm going to put the tip. I don't know, is that where I want it? Maybe we want it to stick out a little bit further. That's okay, It'll get that'll get covered up. We'll stick it up right here. So it doesn't look awkward with that straight edge in the middle of the page. I'm just gonna kind of, tear around this flower. There we go. There we go. 
that's nice. That's going to look really nice. All right, so I'm just going to glue this down. And we'll see what it looks like. I'm still getting that harsh shadow. Okay, so I want it to look, since he's kind of sitting on that straight, we'll go with that. And I'm just going to tear this still a little bit more. I got glue. This is why I have glue that dries clear, y'all, because I am messy with glue, very messy. So let's see how that looks. Oh, that's perfect. See, he sticks out. I like that. That looks nice. Okay. So what I want to do is kind of collage on this bottom down here. This isn't sticking well, so I'm just going to use that as an opportunity. It's gonna take a little bit of this paper. Um, kind of stick that under there. Okay, now I have, let's see, I had found some other pages that had like words on it. I like this BU, but I don't want that gold around it. Let me see if I can find a circle punch. All right. Let's see where we want to put that. I like that there. Let's do a little inking around it. My desk, y'all, I, I just try. I have every type of organizational thing you can imagine. And maybe I just have too much. Well, I shouldn't say everything you can imagine because there, everybody knows there's gobs of things out there. But I just feel like I have it organized and yet it still stays a mess all the time. I just, just living with it because I don't know what else to do. <laughs> I just, I just don't know. Okay, so I like that. Let's put that on there. Okay, that looks great. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and stick that. Hopefully none of the glue is wet because I'm going to stick that in there. And we'll just hope it doesn't stay stuck <laughs> in there because I have done that before. Um, but, you know, if I sit it, if I put it somewhere, it's going to get lost because that's what happens. I've already lost the pin that goes in my glue. Not to mention I have... The glue stick I just used, I have no idea where I set it down. And it's open because here's lids. Here it is. It's slid under there. Okay. Anyway, uh, y'all, I'm sure y'all don't want to listen to me ramble on about such. All right. So this page is very stiff on this side. And I don't want it to, uh, to curl up. So, um, I'm wondering if I should put something stiffer behind it. I don't know. See, this all comes with the, the first 
doing it for the first time here. So, um, I did a decoupage the other day, and, and I really like doing the decoupage. I could try to do that on here. See, what I was thinking was, is I could do the decoupage on a book page and then glue that book page onto this book page. That might work. Why not? Let's just try it. So I'm just going to tear this edge. Because this is, of course, where the book was ripped out here and here. So I'm going to ink these edges so you can kind of tell it's an addition. And uh, I have no idea where I put my, um, when I cleaned my desk up the other day, of course I moved everything around. And I don't think this is my vintage photo um, inking tool, but I have no idea where I put it. So we're just, I think this was my tea dye one, but we're just going to use this. It really doesn't matter. So this will probably be the last thing that I do for today's video. Um, this one jump in. I'm still trying to do a video a week. Doesn't always work out, but that's what I'm attempting to do. Now, what was I doing? Decoupage. I have some napkins that, um, Let's see, I put them in here so I would know where they were. I used this one the other day. Um, I like these daffodils. This is just fruit, I don't wanna use the fruit. Okay, so we're going to use the daffodils. So, um, I'm just gonna go, and that way, I'm going to do this on camera. That way, if you've never used a napkin before, you know what to do because the first time I did a, a napkin, I did not realize how many layers there was. And so when I did my decoupage, um, it wrinkled a lot because I didn't take all the layers off. Now you can use tape to do this part and it's probably faster. But you wanna pull and this one I already took the other layer off. Usually there's another layer and then you take this layer off. So um, just make sure you take all the layers off. This is the layer I forgot to take off last time. And so it's, um, so it'll make it wider and then it'll also be harder to, um, to decoupage on, if that makes sense. So for this one, I actually want to use a whole panel now, you can wet the napkin and get a more controlled tear. Like, just use a paintbrush and paint around what you want to use. And then you can get a more controlled tear. Like, if you wanted to just get one daffodil out, you could paint around it and do it that way. Um, I kind of just like tearing it and seeing, since, especially since I'm going to use the whole panel. Just, you know, let it do its thing. Sorry if I'm getting out of frame. Like I said, I zoomed in today, so it's a little different area than what I'm used to. Just tear the bottom. And I, when I wanted to do some napkin decoupage, I went to Etsy and I bought some napkins because, I mean, you can get napkins like this. I know TJ Maxx usually has them in other places, but it's a whole bunch of them in a pack. And I really don't want 20 of the same napkins. So I did go to Etsy and just buy some. Okay, now we're going, I'm going to use the uh, Tim Holtz Distress Collage Medium, the crazing one. I really don't care about it being the crazing one. It's just they were out of the regular Distress Medium Collage Medium. So that's why I got this. And I, I have used just regular, regular, sorry, I sound like a hick when I say regular, <laughs> regular um, matte medium, 
I mean, I have some that I got at Walmart, just a super cheap brand, and it works for the napkin decoupage. So if you don't have this, try using something you already have. Like if you have just a regular matte, a regular matte medium, um, you know, try it out. I do a little bit at a time. I start from the bottom or the top and I just stick down a little bit at a time. I feel like that's an easier way for me to not get wrinkles in it. Um, just remember once the napkin gets wet with the medium, be careful not to rub over it too many times because then you can put a hole in the, nap Oops, the napkin. That was where I had torn it a little bit when I was tearing it out. See, I've already gotten a hole in it right there, but that's okay. I don't let stuff like that stop me from using something that I've made because it just adds extra character to it. Nothing you make is going to be perfect. It shouldn't be perfect because we're human. We're not a machine. That's why handmade things are so great because they're unique. They're different. Everyone you make is different. Even if you try to make them identical, there will be something different about them. So just keep that in mind. Don't, don't be hard on yourself. I used to be really hard on myself trying to make everything look perfect. All right, so this is really wet. So I'm going to let this dry. I do love this yellow color. Beautiful. I'm not sure what's in the back, but, and I hope those are daffodils. I really don't know a lot about flowers, but since I said it a whole bunch of times that they're daffodils, I sure hope that's what they are. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna let that dry a second and clean my brush and then I'll be back. Now, because I have zero patience, and even though I had to move everything off my desk so I wouldn't warp this mat, I went ahead and used my heat gun to dry this because I really don't want to wait. And truthfully, every time I've done decoupage, I dry it that way. So I really have no idea what it looks like when you let it air dry. It may look different. I don't know. I do know that heat drying it makes it curl up more. So that's one bad thing about doing it that way. But... It's all fine. I don't want to wait for it to dry on its own. Okay, I am going to use the glue gun. Hopefully, I mean, not the glue gun. This is not a glue gun. Glue stick. Hopefully, the glue stick will make it bend the opposite direction that it's bending now because the paper's wet. In that direction, it may not. It may still curl up the other way. Oh well, it's not the end of the world either way. I am using a lot of glue on this because I'm really worried that it's not going to stick down properly since it's so curled up. So we'll find out if that works. All right. I'm getting the book. I have set it down over here. Okay. Piece of hair. There's dog hair all in my house everywhere from my daughter's dog. All right, I'm going to start at the bottom and do it slowly coming up to try to minimize the amount of wrinkles that I get. Now I left the, the top and the bottom straight so it would be easier to line it up on the page. If you do get any wrinkles, just slowly work them out. And remember, you know, you don't wanna tear your decoupage, so be gentle. I really like how that turned out. I'm going to put a little bit of glue on 
I do like it curling up. I just don't want it to curl up too much and then begin to tear. So that's why I'm kind of putting this extra glue in there because that's what I worry about happening. I don't want it to start tearing. Okay. Whoops, that, <laughs> that doesn't go on there. All right. So I'll go ahead and do the page opposite. Y'all can tell I don't have my glasses on. Okay, wow. I'm going to go ahead and do this page opposite of this. I really like the yellow. So um, I'm going to find something that does have yellow in it for right across. Try this new paper. I don't think it has any yellow in it though. Um, I do not like that. Okay, nope, I don't, hold on. Nope. Let's see. Um, I mean, I kind of like that because it's got just a little pop of yellow and this is very strong over here. Okay, I think we'll go with that one. Yeah. So I'm gonna do my fancy measuring again. Although, I keep losing all my pencils. They keep falling on the floor. All right, so we're, I'm going to cut right here and right here, but I am using my paper trimmer because we all saw what happened when I didn't use my paper trimmer. Not straight. Now, I do like how this paper already looks like it's collaged. But I kind of have an idea on doing something to kind of um, add like a little pocket. I don't want it to be a big bulky pocket because there's already gonna be a pocket on the opposite side. Okay, obviously we have to cut this off or that's not gonna go under there. Yes, it took me way too long to figure that out. Um, See, I do like how that looks. It is a collage paper look, so you already get the collage look to it without adding more layers in that way. So, I want it a little bit shorter. Let's tear the top a little bit. Y'all, I don't think I can put a piece of paper in without tearing it in some way. There's very few anyway. I don't know why. I've always had an obsession with torn edges. Just call me a weirdo. I'm fine with that. I'll admit it. I'm a weirdo. Doesn't bother me. Okay. Um, I just want to take a small amount off the edge. And there again, not straight. Today is just cut it crooked day. We're just, that's just it. We're going with it. All right, going to glue this. And then I think I'm going to see if I have um, just a small dually and make a little pocket or at least just a decoration, maybe with it and some words. Um, I'll see what I have. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's funny because when I started the book, I was heavy distressing, and now I'm not distressing that much. But I would already said the whole book is not, I have no intention on being matchy-matchy throughout the book. I'm just going with, especially since I'm working on it on different days and different weeks, just whatever I feel at that time. So it's really, um, I'm not worried about the, the only thing that will remain, like I said, through the whole book is butterflies. So, um, you know, it's okay that one page has a lot of distress and the next page has little to none that's not going to bother me. All right, so I have some doilies somewhere. Um, I try to organize some of this stuff. This is envelopes, that's not it. All right, here's doilies. Let's see, I have these really small ones. I think I'm going to do this right here. Did not fold that in half very well. I really want to line up the pattern. So all I want to do, I'm not going to glue those two sides of the doily together. I'm just going to go right around the edges of the, like the pattern curved edges, not that straight edge that I folded. Don't do that. Smeared it. have glue all over my fingers, which is not good. Now I'm gonna go ahead and open that up so it doesn't get stuck down because I want this to be another like little hidden journal spot. And then this tag may be too large, but I have smaller tags. This can just be the spot for a little tag to go right there. So that was my idea for that. Now I am feeling like this needs something over here. So that little strip, oh, where did it go? Do y'all look, do y'all use half your crafting time searching for things on your desk? Because I promise you, I spend way too much time looking for things that have gotten buried on my desk. I found it. Um, I like, I saw it had these uh, words on it, and so I thought that would look good to put some of them down here somewhere, or just a few of them, but I like how it looks like one of those, like, punch strips, like, I don't know, when I was a kid, we used to have those, little, make little labels out of it, and it clicks. I used to think those were the coolest thing. Things I used to covet when I was a child were mainly office supplies. I wanted a stapler and I wanted a label maker. And <laughs> I used to get carbon paper so I could make copies. So yeah, I've always been um, in love with office products and paper goods. So I guess I was destined to do this type of crafting. Even though I started crafting, I mean, my crafting world began with uh, yarn, making um, I'm sorry, 
making cro like crocheting and uh, and then I did cross stitching. So okay, I didn't like it as long as it was. We're gonna do this cherish moments right down here. And um, I should have inked around that because you can't see it very well. I'll use one of these small inking brushes. Just give it a little bit of inking around it and make it just stand out a little bit. Hopefully I won't make it look so much as an afterthought. Uh, that works, I guess. And uh, I might do a couple more. Let's see. We'll use Inspire. And I will ink it first. All right, now I feel like I need three. <laughs> I need three words on here. Two, well, I mean, there's already three words on there, but I mean three sets. All right, so we'll put la, our value here. So we have value, inspire, and cherished moments. Um, we may ink, ah, oh, I forgot to leave it open, y'all. See, I do these things. This is how I ended up gluing a um, journaling card inside a pocket before had to totally remake it, wasn't good. All right. No, I don't like that. We might use those on the tag that we put inside it. Uh, let's see what tags I already have made, because I do have tags already made. So this video is gonna be way too long. So this is what I'm going to do. We're going to tear this piece here. And I'm going to glue it. And if you have like different um, graduated die, tag dies or something, you know, nested ones that do this is what I did one day. I just got a bunch of paper and cut a bunch of different size tags that way when I want to use. Um, let's see, that's what I tell you about this glue tearing the page if you don't put it on there right. Um, that way, when I'm ready to make something, I don't have to get the die cut machine out. Um, I already have some ready to go. I just want a little bit of that top edge of the orange, orangey, yellowy, orangey, brown, whatever color it is sticking out. And let's go ahead and glue that on. 
my glue's getting low. Thankfully, I have another bottle. Hopefully, it's still good. I do order them in advance because they cannot ship them, or at least the place I buy them from doesn't ship them when it's below freezing anywhere along the way. So, you definitely um, want to have some on hand. I'm gonna make it where the pretty side. All right, let's see. So you just have that little bit of vellum around the outer side and then I'm going to put this coffee dyed paper, lined paper on the back. So that's our layered up tag. And then if we want, we can just ink these edges just a little bit, not much. I like how it's gonna kind of look like it's floating in the pocket because of the vellum. There we go. That looks pretty, I like that. Now I kind of do feel like we need something right there. Um. Of course, I can't. Why do I, I just, I can't deal with the white spaces. I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, where is that book that had words in it? Look, we could put and then always um, I'm just finding things that are laying on my desk at this moment in time. There's already like a hundred butterflies on here, but let's add another one. Why not? Right? Why not? Just go with it. Sometimes you can overthink things, which I often do often. So sometimes you just got to just do it once and then say, yep, that works. Because, you know, I could sit here and change it around 20 times or decide not to use it. But usually later when I go back and look at something I wasn't completely happy with, I ended up, I end up liking it anyways. So, all right. So there we go, and then you have your little secret journaling spot that kind of got glued there um, because I don't have patience. And then we have our tag that hopefully dries flat because it's very... All right, so that's what we did today. We'll have to come up with an idea for a journaling card here, but I thank y'all all for joining me today. This book is going to take a while. Stick it out with me if you want. Y'all have a wonderful day. Like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thanks. Bye.